Welcome to yet another iteration of IEPY Jaguars CSGO. This time we'll be hitting you with a varsity matchup. Two undefeated squads, both 3-0, headed into a very important matchup. Bit of a David versus Goliath situation on our hands. Here we got Davenport University as the opponents. Davenport, well-known collegiate university, um, pretty much trying to, I'd say, innovate on the NACSGO formula of, you know, making ECL teams sponsored by some organization and instead trading it out for collegiate-based teams. Um, they have a ECL spot. They uh, generally, I think, do pretty well in every collegiate league they've ever played, um, usually finishing first. So even winning a map would probably be enough for celebration for the IEPY Jaguars and winning the series would be an absolute miracle. But we are here to witness the results regardless. Uh, Davenport's lineup has been um, not solidified throughout the season. They've, they've played with different fives, so we'll just have to see what they line up with here. In about five minutes is when the vetoes will start. Till then, I guess some interesting history. The only time that I believe IEPI has played Davenport in a collegiate environment was, I mean, we're, we're probably looking at four to five years ago um, in a CSL league match, which IEPI won 2-0. Now, the roster that Davenport was fielding at that time was completely different than the five that we'll probably play tonight. And I think the best player on the Davenport roster at the time was Arcade. Um, so... Needless to say, two completely different environments. Um, there are still three IEPY players remaining on this roster. So I guess it wasn't four or five years ago. It was probably more towards three years ago. Um, CMX, Big Daddy A, and Gumboot all would have played in that Davenport game. And since then, I don't think there's many collegiate matchups. I think there was a bit of a IEPY versus Davenport stack, best of one on a cash cup on Nuke that went the way of IEPY in overtime, but uh, IEPY had some non-collegiate players playing in that one as well. It was kind of just truly a, a mixed bag kind of game. Uh, regardless of whatever history exists, I think Davenport comes in as the absolutely clear favorite. So any, any, any close contests, we'll say, uh, will be surprising and exciting if they occur. Um, other than that, I, I don't have great insight as to either team's map pool. We can take a look. I'll, I'll switch us over to um, a look here on the Avaport Rut team's page. We'll do a bit of map speculation. So we've seen Ancient, Overpass, Inferno, and Nuke in the collegiate matches. I believe this Vertigo game also is likely a this season collegiate match. So looks like we're seeing... Not a lot of Mirage, not a lot of Anubis out of Davenport to start this collegiate season. I don't think that IEPY will be too upset with any of the five maps that were suggested, except for Inferno. I don't think we'll see an Inferno tonight. Um, but I, I'd say, just looking at this map pool right now, I'd say anything from, from Ancient Overpass Vertigo, I think are, are going to be very likely maps tonight. I, I see I see Davenport picking overpass um with the ban of Inferno. I definitely feel like that's a map that they feel really comfortable on. They consistently pick it even in ECL. Okay. Um if you look at their seasons, that's like their go to map. So I expect overpass unless IPOI wants to try their hand and essentially vertigo. Um or not vertigo, inferno. Yeah, right. Um I don't know if Davenport Bans Mirage, but it seems like they do if they haven't played it once, because I have a hard time believing no college team would pick like not pick Mirage against them. I mean, and if like, you listen if, to Strelock and CMX about Inferno, they'll tell you the worst team wins Inferno. So yeah, I, so <laughs> we'll see Overpass unless they they want to try their hand on Inferno. Um, we'll probably not see Mirage. I assume Danport will ban it, which will probably leave IUPUI to pick maybe Vertigo again or Ancient. Um, they have had trouble on vertigo in the past or like not even trouble it's just like they played really close and they lost their map pick so i don't know if that's changed their mind about it as a team playing vertigo 
if they'll change it. I definitely think Anubis will not get banned right away. It could be floated even as a third. Um, I, 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 I've I, seen... I wouldn't be surprised to see Davenport banning out Anubis. Like, I, second they're, wave? They're just so successful on the core maps that, like... I mean, do you think that they're banning... Uh, what was the, do, you, do you think that they're first banning Mirage? Do they have Mirage in their ECL history at all? Um... I can I double check. Yeah. I I can double check. I don't think so though. I really I see it. I see it first ban just based off the fact that like, how is it like not even been like? Um... I mean, if you're a university like Davenport, I think I honestly think that Mirage is a pretty smart ban if you have deep um, strats on all the other maps because it's the one map that you can isolate yourself from, especially other collegiate teams that don't have as much practice as you. Davenport has a a large advantage in that. All, all of them are scholarships to play for this collegiate team, and it's not like a mixed team of different, you know, ESCA rosters. I mean, even the IEPY team has um, two ESCA rosters and two players that aren't even on ESCA rosters right now. And, you know, it, that, that just makes practicing that much more difficult. And Davenport, you know, is a university that doesn't have that issue. But Matt Vitos and roster lock should be starting any second now. Yeah, no, there's, there's no Mirage here. It is... It is probably their perma. I no mirage in any like as any three maps from these uh, this team. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna shoot. It's gonna so be Rift, Rift is playing in place of is is it like Spec or something? I don't Did they take it. out Spec? Yeah, it's Rift. Rift is in, and this is I think this is the same roster or a very similar one that they played the Northwood. Team. If they so are, Mars yeah. did get banned by Davenport and Inferno gets yep. banned from IEPY. So you're expecting an overpass. If I'm IEPY, I mean the history says that they're picking into Vertigo here, but I mean you you mentioned they lost Vertigo and it took overtime in their previous matchup to win on Vertigo. So I mean I, I just don't I don't see any of the other maps as as pickable for the for the Jaguars. Like if Mirage was still in here, I could see them wanting to pick that into Davenport, but because it got banned, like I'm actually kind of I, I would not. I would be surprised to see anything but a Vertigo pick. I'll say that much. Yeah, no, like I, I see it too. I just know that that or it's it's just the history shows Davenport like does not mind that at all. They're very very comfortable on Vertigo. They play it all the time. Um, I didn't know if they're gonna figure something out because they maybe felt a little shaky on it. I don't know what goes on in IPY and I mean, IPY what they're is talking definitely about. Thinking about this pick, they right are now. thinking about this pick. It's been because they can forty five seconds. They could even pull out an Anubis pick. Yeah, Davenport has played Anubis, but they don't play. They don't pick into it, and they just like they kind of float it. Um, if they want to take a, if, if IPY is looking to take a gamble pick, um, they. I mean, here here would be a bit of a counter argument, and that would be that Anubis is probably next to Overpass as the most op dominant map in the game right now. Um, maybe tied with Mirage in a in a way, and like, do you really want to go against Davenport? Well, Spec is their opper. Um. I guess like maybe Rift is an op. Like obviously, probably all of them could use the op, but like Spec has been hard dedicated op most of uh, their games that they play. Well, IPY so. has made their selection, and now Davenport is on the ban queue. They are mulling that over, and we'll start to get an insight as to what the picks were immediately after. Yep, I know that uh, Koi has done a little bit of research. I don't know how extensive he's gone in for IPY, but he always he always checks. Um, he, they they definitely know about tendencies and at least has done a review or two from Davenport. If you're IPY here and it's Nuke or Anubis as the last two, I mean you probably are going Anubis if you're IPY. Yeah. Which will yep. break your heart if you don't see new... Overpass, Vertigo, and Anubis. Yeah. Well, I, I think definitely just going into this, you, you, you have to you have to expect that if IEPY is going to take a game, it will be on Vertigo. Um, but even then, I think it'll be a very uphill battle. And as soon as we get the IP, we can get into the server and... Start up this best of three. Yeah. Oh, I... And F's in the chat for Nuke. F's in the chat. There will be no corn on corn today.
heart shattered. Yeah, tragic. Give me that raw IP. Eventually. So, what are your what are your predictions? I mean, I think. I, I, obviously, the key for overpass, in my opinion, is step one, establish a decent CT defense for the Jaguars, and that comes in the way of your A offer and, and, and very you know large impact. So that's that's likely going to be a gumboot position on that A-bomb site. Uh, the second part of overpass is if you can stop them on that A default, which is kind of like, you know, what the T's will, will, will go to um, if you let them, then you've got to have good counter b side execute protocols and both of those things are going to be well trained on the Davenport side, and it's going to be on IEPY to kind of surprise us with how well they can play the defense. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, King. Player to watch in this game, in this first game, definitely going to be Blaker ninety nine on that op gum boot. I mean, uh, I think it's definitely worth noting that in the last two matches that IEPI has played, it has really been. Um, the Big Daddy A and CMX show. It has. The last two maps especially have been absolutely carry jobs by CMX and Big Daddy A. So any amount of stepping up from the surrounding cast would, uh, you know, at the very least, I, I think is necessary in a game like this. Yeah. You need an unsung hero, essentially. You need someone to take up that third role for them, that third position. Make those key plays. One thing that you run into a lot in Collegiate Counter-Strike is impossible to pronounce or impossible to denote uh, names. And uh, thankfully, Davenport does not have those. They are, uh, they are, they are ECL ready with these names. Almost all of them are one syllable. For the last member of IPL to join, that's going to be Gumboot, and then we will start by Davenport throwing the knife round. We'll start by watching them knife each other. Team kill style. IPL is starting the CT side. Very important on a map like Overpass to get a good CT side start, a good economy going. Um, yeah. I mean, Overpass is one of the largest, what I would call ct utility taxes which is like mandatory ct utility that you have to throw to start the round to establish a ct default that lets you get information early or prevents any greedy rushes like i'd say to start the ct round on overpass especially in a high level what you will generally see is at least one molly thrown towards stairs at least one molly or nade or flash thrown to stop the b rush as well as a monster smoke as with that so you're already on three pieces of utility mandatory and then a lot of teams now nade the condor so that's four pieces and a lot of teams will molly the water so that's five pieces of util and you can even add on playground mollies for alternate strategy so all of this money being drained round after round just as pretty much a tax where i, I think the, the a, a comparable map in this case is probably something like Nuke, 
where you're always mauling Hut and Squeaky a lot of the times, and you're also throwing some pieces of default utility outside, sometimes a molly, sometimes a Glaive Smoke. Um, so it's those kinds of maps where CC economy becomes super important and keeping CTs alive becomes super important. Um, I saw an HLTV graphic today that showed Outsiders, unsurprisingly, as the number one team in terms of save rates. Um, the, the worst team was Complexity. <laughs> so... I think also, like, I'm not too surprised by that either. Definitely, I, I think it's definitely kind of an NA mentality, um, especially on, like, a high level to, to not really, uh, to not really save, to always go for it. Everyone's been inspired by Hiko. All right. Should start here in the next 20 seconds, and we will see Psych. what IEP can bring us. Some uh, one of them is having issues. Uh, this is the second time he's crashed. Yep, in chat. So it looks like this warm up is going to. Oh, he's been trying to change the video settings in game. Yeah, that is a misplay. Getting a uh, yeah. So this warm up will switch out, and then Davenport will call a tech pause, and then we'll have to slowly get into it. They're icing IUPY here at the start. This is a very ingenious tactic. The double fake crash. That's actually unheard of. <laughs> get get their guard down. And they come out bang bang swinging. Just looking at uh, the quick buy, you can see that Pug and Davenport, the veteran, buying Uto for the team, you know? Truly a veteran of the game. Okay, one of them is playing on a laptop, according to... This is the advantage that the Jaguars need. This is the Jag... Straylock confused. Uh, most Michigan... Michigan uh, schools are on spring break right now, as Western Michigan's on spring break. This was the last day. Next week is spring break for us, as well as Central Michigan, Michigan State. I think Butler okay. might have to be on spring break next week as well. Yeah, so we do get spring break, and as a reward for spring break, we got about eight feet of snow. I had to... Yeah, we had a ton, an absolutely downpour. Well, not eight feet, today. sorry, eight, eight it inches. It was like eight tropical inches. storm level rain in indiana for like or at least in indianapolis for like all day today i'm glad that i did not have to walk to work yeah we got eight inches of snow um i was at working the basketball game we beat central michigan our rivals uh but then i had the yeah but Brandon Flowers off. doesn't play there anymore so who cares it's so we got true Marquise hastings instead we do butler legend i've heard so yeah. i've heard big butler guy hmm This laptop does not have this an SSD. It is on a hard drive from 2016. This laptop is struggling. Always back. All right, don't touch your settings. Tactile, do not change your video settings. Play on 60 FPS if it's... Wait. All right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that live pop up before. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's new for Faith. Okay. And it shows, yeah. That's ESC-esque font, dude. Yeah. All right, the binds are in. Means the game will start. People spam. Even trying to make enough right. Gumboot has the juiced A peak squad, so he'll probably take this informational peak. The rest of the players going for a B stack now. On the Davenport side, we're seeing definitely uh, more A-centric play, so the B stack is likely to be useless for the Jaguars, and you can even see Strelak abandoning it immediately. Going to be a flashbang for Pug, flashing his teammates out divider, quickly going to spread themselves onto that position. Now, on the T side, they're going to scale up, not opting for a fake, going quickly into the bomb site. Here comes the utility, raining in Gumboot from Dice. He needs to hit some shots for his team, not raining in just yet, and they are scaling into Truck and behind Dice, and it is falling apart so quickly now for the IUPI Jaguars. Not able to handle that Davenport execute. Flashes were very strong from the veteran, but the frags are coming back for the Jaguars. No kit means this is going to have to be a pretty quick 
Retake. Shreylock like, did buy a kit, so there is a kit somewhere on the uh, on the field. Okay, XT, XT, being a truck player, but cannot save CMX from that. Now Pug finds himself in a one versus one. He doesn't have armor, which could make this difficult for him. EXT not able to hit that first shot. Gonna tap the bomb again. Without a kit, you really can't hope to stick this. And Pug, he's jump spotted and found out that there is no stick. EXT with three kills on the retake, but it's not gonna be enough. The Devonport entries were just too strong. Yeah, very, very basic con to A play there on the pistol round. Um, unfortunately, Gumboot had an opportunity to get one or two potentially on the on the run up, and he just the shots did yeah. not land. And, and I, I wasn't on the truck players POV, but I'm assuming that the flashbangs thrown by Pug from bathrooms were strong enough to make those players just full blind for the scaling to be very yeah. effective. I mean, the the pathing from Davenport was very textbook there. Into truck very quickly, take that space, and then use that space to flank the dice player. IEPUI gonna just full save this one. Sure, like, very aggressive on the con. Doing a bit of damage to Corn, but not able to take him down. And now Gumboot gonna be stranded. CMX smoked off of any support. Anti eco long default always. I, I won't say always, but it's definitely a, a meta play to create long ranges rather than close ranges. Fight against these pistols and no success thus far for IEPUI on this eco round. Looks like it's gonna be a pretty clean win for Davenport. goes EXT. Now, Big Daddy A does. He is equipped with a Zeus. He's also equipped with a Dream. Will it be enough to find a kill? Or is it just a meme? Dangerous. Wow, that was quick. Big Daddy A, not even, not even enough time to react and shoot the Zeus. Instantly dead from the heavens. From that Mac 10 And we are into gun round CSGO. Big Daddy A opting into an AUG smoke grenade. The rest of the team going to be buying up M4A4 or M4A1S. Not a whole lot of utility to be said about the IEPI Jaguars. And as I mentioned earlier on the utility tax, overpass requires a lot of CT utility to establish full map CT defaults. And there's only one Molotov on IEPI. That's going to be on EXT. Likely to... Use it early on monster. Actually, no effort from the IUPI Jaguars to stop a possible monster rush, so we'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, the A players locked in on this double long setup. Davenport, very passive on this default thus far. Two con, and very slowly and very diligently clearing all these angles. This Molotov makes it very hard for any CT to aggress into party, and I'm sure they pair that up with a flashbang as well. Now teaming up to clear out water as a team. This is... Incredibly diligent, especially to start the game. They want to see, you know, can we catch out any early game CT pushes? Can we get any reads on how they're going to play the rest of the CT half out? And right now, IEPY is playing passive except for Straylock. He is lurking up long and may have found a gap. Rift holding with the scout, but it's not an op, and that's not going to be enough to take down Straylock, who quickly trades the 70 damage for a kill. Meanwhile, Gumboot finds one with the M41S, but can only find half of Pug, who currently has Straylock trapped out long. There isn't anyone flanking, but Straylock does not know that. Full focus on this long bathroom angle is the IPY rifler. Tags up Pug for one shot, but isn't enough to finish him now. Three versus three develops. With only 40 seconds left, Davenport has to feel a little bit of time pressure. CMX, lone player on the A-bomb site now for IPY. The other two Jaguars planning to stick it out on B in. With how Davenport is progressing, that might be the wrong read. CMX getting caught out in the open, but it's a MAC-10 fighting him. That's going to be a free win for the A1S. Here comes the Mollies and the Execute onto the bombs. So CMX is going to give up that space and play for the retake, waiting for his teammates to arrive. 16 seconds, but it's going to be plenty for Davenport to get a plant in. No kits on the IEPY side. Also, very sparing utility. There's no smoke for the CTs here for the post plant. So, if the Davenport players can establish a default, but it's not going to be good enough, CMX triples up in the round, and IEPY are on the board. First gun round victory goes to them. Yeah, <laughs> Davenport, very basic to the book kind of default there to set up to see what IEPY does. Straylock makes a great lurk play. Finds a, finds a hole that kind of breaks the default apart. And then CMX with a great hold and retake to play his own life. And wait for his teammates on the retake after finding the one kill. 
and he ends up getting both yeah. anyways. I mean, what we saw there was a very, very diligent T-side default. First clearing out this area, then clearing out this area, and then in the mid-round, what they had was Rift holding long with the scouts, but because it wasn't an AWP, the chest shot wasn't enough to finish Straylock, who quickly capitalized, found that kill, and then the chain of events that followed allowed IEPY to have man advantages into these site takes and win the round ultimately. So Davenport, gonna switch it up, not nearly as map wide. There's only one con this time for Davenport, more A focused. They had two con last round, and I don't think they have any hope to take water in the near term instead focusing on the A bomb sites, which might not be a horrible call. They did kill the A players in the last round, so they know the economy on the A players are low, at least in re uh, relation to the B site players for the Jaguars. And Divider Molotov plus front bathroom smoke will completely box the CTs into bathrooms just as Davenport is starting to walk through long. The B players, meanwhile, just have some jump spawning going on. It's currently not led to any early rotations, which is what you'd hope information like that would lead to eventually. Gumboot, he's playing this off angle bathrooms. The long bath players just now for Davenport are coming through. Flashes into Divider. There are four T side players trying to approach this bathroom setup. Will it be good enough for IPL? They find the first Gumboot, sprays down the first one, gets peaked, gets the second straight lock, finds one for himself, and now Corn. Left with all the pieces to pick up. Meanwhile, Dane Joris finds Big Daddy A on B, but CMAX will trade the A player. And now it's all down to Dane Joris, who has a kill on the round, but only 22 HP. The CT bathroom setup for IEPY, I don't know how Gumboot finds that second kill. No, I don't either, but it was a great setup. It was a great bait and switch that they were trying to go, uh, trying to use as Gumboot was able... As CMAX gets the last kill. Wow. Gumboot finding two, and as the divided players try to swing, uh, the MP9 in a good position to help help his teammate out and that's really huge that only that uh three players survive for ipy allowing them to build an economy here as davenport's gonna save so it's very crucial that they win this I round mean, you, you have casualty. to you have to say gumboot is a bit lucky to have not gotten instantly headshot but the cha the chaotic nature of that situation where gumboot is moving forward and diagonally gave him just the amount of like i guess lucky movement that the player trying to trade from long bathrooms missed his shot and then that was good enough for gumboot to then flick over and find the kill now, we have a port. They're on, they're forced onto a save here. There is a bit of utility on Pug, and I think this is going to be very similar to their pistol round strategy. They're going to try to explode out Divider, use that one flashbang, and then scale up into bathrooms. Pause for a second. Pug will then throw jump um, jump up, and then probably one flashbang to scale. Um, I used to, I did not handle this well on the pistol, but with guns, you'd expect them to handle it a little bit better. Um, without smoke flying in, I think Gumboot is just content to play retake here. Yeah, CMX rotating up, Sherlock rotating up. This is just a full retake A. And. If Davenport plays their cards right here, they're, they're, uh, there's actually no flank coming in from the CTs. The entire post plant for the CT retake is coming in from CT, but Sherlock, he finds a fortunate spray. He gets three. And now it's just Pug on dice box as well as a teammate, his corn on truck. And now it's just left a corn. One versus five. Finds the first of the tech, but can't find the second. So what could have been a bit dangerous uh, works out pretty cleanly for IEPY. Yeah, it works out very cleanly. Um, Davenport's going to be happy with the mom plant. IPA is going to be happy that four people survive. Kind of upset that maybe not five did, but regardless, this will allow them to build a bank um, as we'll get another buy round in here. We'll see if uh, we'll see if Davenport tries to pick up the pace here and tries to take fast map control. They do have the op coming out. So yeah, this the this first, is the first uh, op we've seen. Yeah, good point. First op coming in. So we'll, that probably won't uh, indicate a fast play, but we'll see if they just keep going with their comprehensive default. Well, we, we really haven't seen um, like extended water control from, from Davenport yet either, so that's something to look towards. Quick two mollies. I believe that playground molly might have missed. But Davenport not really taking that space anyway. Not a whole, I, wait, they missed stairs and playground molly there, didn't they? Or was was the stairs molly smoked? No, they, they smoked it. Okay, they smoked okay. one of them. I it was, know a really, it was a really good smoke that allowed the op to still scale forward and not be smoked. So that's definitely worth noting. I feel like going to mix up the setup once again. Got to send Sherlock into close flowers. Gumboot spotting out this early bathrooms take. And I mean, once again, we're seeing an A focus from Davenport on their defaults to start this game. This is something that you can start out, take these pieces of map control, and then later in the game, mix it up, hit B more. And you you, you will notice that, I mean, what's more important now, Sherlock is probably going to get pushed into flowers. Doing some jump spotting. They haven't cleared close yet. Pug now going to swing. Sherlock tags him down quite a bit, cannot find the kill. And that long lurk smoke will make that kill untradeable. Very good solid default there where you smoke right here so that you can clear this without getting traded from sight. Meanwhile, we've seen Dane Joris. I, I don't think we've seen him be this aggressive towards short on his B lurks yet. We've seen him be quite aggressive monster, but not towards short. Something to keep an eye on. The A player is just now trying to get 
re aggressive, trying to get some information back after losing Straylock. And it's definitely important to get that information back because right now the Davenport is suggesting uh, B as their final target. EXT now rotating towards A. Big Daddy A gets picked from Greats, and, and this is just going to be a full execute onto the B site from Davenport. It's, it's going to be EXT triple kill or bust here for the Jaguars. He gets one but cannot find a second, and now you've got to wonder if the IEPY Jaguars just want to save this. There are two Davenport players quite low. That's one of them. Rift goes down after missing an off shot from short. Flashbang in gives Gumboot some space to scale. He's cleared out Pit for CMX, who can now scale out onto Bridge. But gets, gets killed by the pillar player trying to scale up. And now Gumboot with it all to do. One versus three. Peeking to three players at once. No chance that he's ever going to win that one. <laughs> a triple peak. <laughs> yeah, Davenport able to get the A pick early. And then he's rotate everyone the B. IPY forced to rotate one up to try to... IPY didn't really make a play. Like either on B or A to like regain any map. And like kind of sad sights and... I just was what Davenport essentially wanted as I just kind of was able to walk in for free. Uh, opt Big Daddy A from Greats, and I was basically the bomb site. Yeah. Bit of a mixed buy here for the CT. He's going to look to full buy into the next round. Davenport, for the first time yet, going to default into water very quickly, and they're going to meet the IEPY Jaguars pushing in as well. King Joris wins the final Big Daddy A. Fantastic crouch pre fire onto him. Trades onto EXT, and now it's just CMX left to pick up the pieces. Will pick up an MP9. But meanwhile, Pug just completely understands the situation, lurks out onto the B bomb site. And there's just no way Gumboot's gonna expect this. But will he have his back turned? He will not. Pug finds that for free. And now CMX wondering about a connector that sh shouldn't he shouldn't really have been worried about. I mean, Sherlock is in connector. So, I mean, it's not gonna affect the round outcome at all, but maybe a bit of a sign of a miscommunication there. Four to three, Davenport leads. IEPY going to buy back into this. One thing of, 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 I think, importance to recognize for the CT side right now is they, they just have not been able to build up an economy to the point where they can even afford one AWP. So something that I think is, is very critical for a CT side on overpass, the, the AWP, whether you're using it connector or bathrooms or long, has just not been on the board for the Jaguars yet. They're going to opt into a 3A stack, but Downport very quickly going to default into water again. They, they feel like they found a weak point for IEPY. They're going to try to abuse it. Corn and Tactile just lurking up short so quickly here. Going to take this 1v1 on EXT, who gets pre-aimed and deleted very quickly. Now it's just Big Daddy A stuck, just completely isolated on the B-bomb site. Desperate peek, and the monster goes down for the AWP holding him. And now, if you're IEPY, you just save. You have to try to save. Yeah, you're supposed to save here. Davenport just decided to pick up the pace and just walk in the B. And this was the round that IPY decides to stack 3A. Yeah. I mean, this, I, I think this micro example as Davenport tries to hunt is a perfect example of why when you're playing pre-fire angles as CTs, why did it do that? Um, you don't want to just be holding the angle. As, as you can see there, EXT, just holding ramp on the headshot angle makes it like very easy to say, okay, if I'm a T entering, I'm going to clear here first, and then I'm going to clear at the left side pillar, and then I'm going to clear ramp. So if you aren't jiggling back and forth trying to catch a timing, they're just going to swing pre-fire and headshot you, which is exactly what happened. It's also very easy kind of just like psychologically to, if you're playing the same spot, kind of fall asleep on your crosshair. And I think that might have been a bit what happened at EXT as there as well. But that's why you see high-level players like on first oranges on Inferno or Pit on Overpass. They'll always, you know, left, right, left, right, trying to find not only a timing, but to mess up the T-side the, uh, entry pre-fires. Regardless, IEPY... An interesting decision to make here. I, I think if you full, full save here, you can always end up in a situation where you can buy AWP next round. And it looks like they're going to adopt that approach for the rifles that are not buying utility, but the two players that were broke, or I should say the um, the three players in CMX, Big Daddy A, and EXT, they're going to buy down to zero. Well, CMX, CMX saved. He bought util. The other two didn't. Oh, yeah. CMX did full buy to zero. Yeah, Gunboot probably is so. just, you know, thinking, I, I just want to buy a bop. So Davenport, I, I think Davenport may have expected a bit of an aggressive eco-round-esque play here because they are super, super passive on this fountain default right now, just walking up now. Um, 4B stack is, is the actual kind of ace in the hole for IEPY currently, looking like they're going to abandon that and transition into more of an A stack. Bane Joris gets tagged on to 69 for his, I guess, this is the th third round in a row that he's kind of, kind of tried to play these picks 
up short B this time. A bit punished for it. A player is just now starting to see some lurk smokes being thrown. Victory and the UMP might get a challenge from the B lurk, but if he does, it would likely just be a misdirection of the end goal for the Davenport roster. Likely going to come down to CMX and Straylock on this A side defense attempt. CMX throwing what is, I'd say, a, a relatively in, in the age of the map in total, new smoke, new defensive smoke. It prevents the T side's average kind of entry routing with the truck flashbang from being super effective. But with 31 seconds on the round, it's easy for Davenport to wait that out and start the execute as they are right now. Straylock from truck, it's spotted out, getting surrounded as well. CMX covers his dice, now jumping up on the truck, his tactile, he goes down. And CMX went down as well. Gumboot swinging from jump up will collect Dangerous, making this a man advantage situation for IEP. But once again, they have no one on the flank on this retake. And that jump up smoke is going to make things difficult. Big yeah, jumping through. Can't find the kill, but Gumboot trades it now. All down to Rift with the AWP. A smoke and armor trying to win a one versus two. They almost let up for him. He misses the shot, but Gumboot, he chokes. And now it's on the XT who loses. Rift wins a one versus two in improbable fashion. Did Gumboot only have like one bullet in his mag? <sighs> I, I wasn't on Gumboot, I was on Rift's POV, so I don't know what happened there. Uh, a great clutch from Rift, but that's a that's a round that IPY needs to be winning there. It's I mean, um, it's just a complete choke. I mean, Gumboot did exactly what he wanted to. He jumped over the op, miss, and then Rift misses, ruins the crosshair, and then at that point, it should just be EXT and Gumboot wide-swinging the op and trading it in between the shots, and instead, Gumboot can't kill him, and Rift whips out the Tech-9 and kills EXT. Yeah, in a game in a game where you're heavily underdog, those are the type of runs you need to be converting if you want oh, any Gumbo chance of an upset. Early on the flash, it was a very solid flash, but a little early. Big Daddy A and Sherlock oh. also getting pistol kills. This is a winnable round now for the Jaguars, but Davenport they're making the right call to come out B immediately. Will this bomb be in time? It definitely will be. So a post plant going to rise up. CMX has an AWP and armor. EXT has a kit as well. So I mean everything IDPI needs to win this retake is is available and now EXT is collected an AK. So it's gonna be on Davenport to shut down this momentum. EXT gonna go down but gets information for his team. Now Korn getting swung from ramp. He's gonna find that kill. Now CMX in a one versus two finds Korn and I think he spotted out Pug as well. Now CMX trying to take an aggressive angle. The smoke will mask his intentions towards the bomb. Taps it. Pug now has to approach. Does he believe in the stick? He probably doesn't. He knows it's an eco and a kit is unlikely. Now Pug gonna swing. CMX finds the flick shot. And we'll get on the bomb. There's a kit down, but he didn't know EXT had a kit. And IEQI oh, is going to lose another round they should have won. There's a kit down left pillar. It was right next to the bomb. <sighs> Again, that's just a round that you're not even supposed to win a full, a, a, an eco with pistols and, I don't know, lack of communication that... <sighs> There's a kit in play there as CMX plays the place to clutch right. He knows where both players are, spots him out. Uh, let me does ask the another fake... question. He he tapped the bomb, got off, and then tapped it again. Did that also cost him the round? Because I thought the 10, 10 second music started after that second that first half. Yeah, I think I think he also missed tap there, which also again cost them the round. <laughs> Very unfortunate last couple of rounds for IEPY there. This is not easy to recover from mentally either. That's a huge two two round swing there. This could be a 5-5 game. This should be a 5-5 game. I mean, that... That is sometimes the difference between, you know, well-practiced and great teams and, you know, just, a, you know, teams of good players is, is the ability to have, you know, very solid comms and to play together in the clutch and to calm... Uh, not, not calm, but, you know, not, not... Especially not choke, right? Um... If you want to put it in kind of slang terms, I think CMX just spotted out at least one of these A-Lord players. And he's going to get taken down by Tactile after dinking. And here comes the scale onto the A-Bomb site. What's interesting about this round is that Straylock and Gumboot are both in full control of long A, which makes this post plant definitely, you know, winnable. Pug's going to try to prevent that, and he's going to get taken down. Tactile pre-fire spraying that corner. Straylock peeks right into it, gets headshot. That nade will be enough to finish Tactile, though. Meanwhile, the bathroom's post plant has been fully established by Davenport. All three players playing this bomb from bathrooms now. Gumboot and Big Daddy both have smokes, which will immediately make this post plant situation worse. Meanwhile, Gumboot gets flanked from long, and he's not fast enough on his smoke now. Big Daddy just now throwing the smoke down. Flashes for the peaks coming in. Excellent flash from Dangerous. 
Horde's gonna capitalize on that, and now EXC, he finds the first bullet of 22 HP, it makes the bomb almost unstickable, and he's not even gonna get that opportunity. 8-3 to three Davenport, CT economy on a mixed buy at best. Yeah, and meanwhile the T's are rocking 10 and 9k each, effectively. Hey, CMX just gets caught out early, Davenport takes the site, and... They're winning most of these post plants, making the great play of as soon as the smoke is thrown, they had a flash ready to just instantly swing on that smoke, so they couldn't even get in, the, get in to like even tap the bomb. Which uh, just shows the how well Davenport is well practiced on this map and playing together as a team. Yeah, and I mean, every round thus far has been a variation of either a default or a kind of a slow walk opportunistic contact play, and I mean both have been pretty successful for Davenport. Gumbu gonna find a kill with the A1S, aggressive onto Fountain. Con fights go the way of Korn in both contests. EXT gonna try to find a trade. Will spam down Dangerous. Meanwhile, Pug, he's lurked out Monster before in those kind of situations, and it has been successful multiple times now for him. First time found Gumbu on a heaven rotation, now is finding the site, the last, the last line of defense on sites for the IUPY Jaguars. One versus three Gumboot. He was spotted bathroom, so I don't know how quickly they'll expect this CT peak, but Rift is not going to flinch. Nine to three now is the lead for Davenport on an unfavored T side of overpass. Yeah, Davenport definitely getting comfortable now. And they're into their plays and play calling. Uh, IPY needs to break this momentum that the Davenport players have. And we'll see an op on Big Daddy A. Yeah, on Big Daddy A. Okay, so Gumbu electing not to pick up the op. I it, it, I think it's just because Big Daddy A had the fountain spawn timing. Oh, yes. Okay, I see that now. And he is going to beat the Davenport players there, and he's going to hit the shot. So Rift going to go down. That's the first time I think we've seen Davenport challenged on that peak, so he might have just, you know, not been ready. And they ready. switched. Okay. Yep. Great. Good o it's a good find for Big Daddy A because he was on 2 and 10 before that. So it's also a good uh, confidence builder, I'd say. IEP wise, I mean, I I'd say second to top fragger on, on, on average. Sometimes they're top fragger. Um, you know, only being 2 and 10 is just not a good sign to start a map for sure. Meanwhile, you can see going to catch out a lurking Dangerous. Will he expect a second player? That's Pug. 100 HP, plenty of HP to just swing and fight. You can see going to get a flash in, but it's not good enough. Pug not blind at all. A lot of pressure being put on this B-bomb site, but no commit just of yet. Here comes the actual commit. Molly's being thrown in every which direction for Pit. CMX traps. Sherlock spamming. He's going to find Horn, but Tactile doubles up for Bridge. Two versus two all of a sudden. Big Daddy A and Gumboot, the A players this round, rotating in, trying to pick up the pieces. There's... Player close pit, you expect both to be playing from this angle. Pug gonna find Big Daddy in the off angle, and now Gumboot with it all to do can hit the flick shot. Davenport, they pull that round back. Pug with a 3k, yeah. Tactile with a 2k. It's a full house for them. Tactile, 2k on the laptop. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> IPY finds the opening frag, but then Davenport just go into a B play and, and they just honestly hit their shots. There was a couple of like missed shots there. Um, I think EXT had a good chance to kill Tactile there and just prevent that round. And then a great 2v2 uh, played by Davenport as they baited uh, the one guy the, the one guy ramp that the other player was tucked in that got him a free kill on Big Daddy A because he wasn't expecting that. I just had a bug where like AK bullets were coming out of that flashbang or something. <laughs> what the heck? Anyway, this is a pretty clean up style round from Davenport. Very aggressive deagle posturing from pretty much every IUPUI player that's died thus far. And now it's just out of EAC, who is fully being expected. Danger is going to collect that. Almost a team ace for Davenport. Pug, left out. Pug is left out to dry in that front. Gumboot going to buy up the AWP for this last round of the half. 4 to 11 is, is never where you want to be, but it's better than 312. I think it's definitely fair to say that, especially Big Daddy A has, has not had an opportunity to frag yet this half. No. Looks like Davenport's going to close out this half with a B rush. I, like I mentioned earlier, it didn't look like IEPO had great B rush, like anti B rush protocols, and, and Big Daddy's just late. 
Yeah, they did not use their best timing to throw that nade and take that peek, and it's costing them dearly as the frags are going all in favor of Davenport on this B site take. I mean, that, that is exactly why you use your best spawn to play the anti-B rush. And now you have to go for this gun boot. Nice entry op kill there, but he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to win this round for his team. Quickly going to pit. Oh, he almost had that kill, but sliding off the ramp was, I think, what saved Dangerous' life. <laughs> kind of a weird movement play, but also an outplay. Davenport's going to win the half 12 to 3, and... It's definitely it's definitely looking like it's it's Davenport's map pick right now. Yep, it definitely looks like a map that they're well very comfortable on. And they're showing it right now. Waiting till the last round to actually B rush. When they do, they execute it flawlessly. Well, IPI, this was always a large mountain to climb. And they'll have they'll have to do it here. Or just essentially just be ready for Vertigo. And force Anubis. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's no utility bot up here from this T side play, so it's just going to be a full. Is this going to be the classic? Oh, it's it going to be an OG. It might be the pain train here for the. Oh, uh, they're Jaguars. bringing out they're bringing out a fan favorite. Shout out Zaro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think you ever end A with this play, so yeah, it's, it's <laughs> going to be the pain train. Uh, Unfortunately is... for IEPL, they have not pulled the rotations they think, and there are currently two players stationed in water where they are hey. barreling towards very quickly. The pain they're... train, it doesn't stop for anything, and they're going to get both train. kills. Now Rift, it's a pain train. he's had a good game thus far, but can he answer this call? No, Straylock drive-bys. Pug from heaven will trade back at least one. Will it be enough to win the round? I think it's incredibly unlikely. Horn rotating in. Too short. Has a fight on Gumboot, who doesn't really want to give him it. He's going to find one. Big Daddy A almost headshot there. There is a kid on Davenport, so this is winnable. Flashbang comes in in favor of Korn. Big Daddy was full blind there, had to jump away, but Pug gets traded from heaven. And CMX doubles up again. Three on the round for him. And IUPUI, they, uh, they are huffing the copium. They have gotten the pistol round, but can they win it this half? They understood what it meant by pain train, and they, they brought the pain that round. You know... Really just doing it for the fans. You got to appreciate that. Bringing out uh, an old classic strategy and it paying off. Yeah. Well, That's truly what you like is, to see. It's hard to argue that it even worked. No. Like, were they just hit their shots. They just hit their shots. And that's, and that's what you got to do in the paint strain. I, I, I love I love this anti eco play from Davenport. I love the stack long on on save rounds because you're you're expecting them to be like, oh, we want long range fights. Let's go long, and then you just stack it, and uh, they peek you and die, and you take up their AKs. But as of right now, IUPUI just looks like they're waiting for pushes, which I think Davenport will be inclined to give them if the clock goes down long enough. But we'll also, see. the bomb, the bomb is. Oh no! Oh, they're gonna hear this. Caught out here. Oh man, this could get dicey depending on I, Davenport move up. Oh, Gumbo, he, he's actually running away. Here comes the long oh. push. The bomb oh, escaped, right. I think, without being spotted. Ah, wow, this is crazy. Tactile, I think, also just narrowly missed EXT going down connector. These timings so with are big, crazy. with Big Daddy pushed up, he might call a clear. This this could get weird. This could get weird because they might think it's a B stack. Oh, although EXT has just made contact, so. Oh wow, that was that was very panicked. Rift gets team killed by Corn. Meanwhile, Big Daddy with a P90 is is looking for farm, looking for eco kills, but I think his team are going to get them first. Pug has a Galil, so. He's gonna get sprayed down though. CMX finds one. Can't tap down the second, but. Oh! That was a running USP headshot. Big Daddy A with a P90. Is not gonna get to get either kill, because Gumboot will clean that up. Uh, three alive for IEPY isn't horrible, but. This is where the half really starts. T side overpass can be quite difficult to navigate if you are playing. Um, to try to be very diligent in your T side defaults. Um, there are a lot of gaps in where you can be holding with five people at all times. So if, if Davenport is well versed in, in, in finding those gaps or exploiting, um, we'll, we'll say, um, black statistical clears, then it'll be a tough half for IEPY. Big Daddy is not respecting this at all. We've seen, we're now seeing that the door break for Davenport, which I think pressured Big Daddy A to make that swing before he really wanted to. Gumboot gonna get taken down by Pug. EXT flick spray onto Rift, and he kills Pug, opening up the eight bounce solo for his team. That's a crazy play.
Three versus three out of what looks like an absolute disaster of a round. How will IEPY approach this? Plenty of utility on the backs of the remaining Jaguars to at least facilitate one execute or a fake. Right now, Davenport opting for 2A, 1B. Dangerous trying to play defense on both choke points. At the moment, it seems like this 2A is... Oh, that, that's a right really choice. good smoke for Korn at this point in the round. IPO is going to have to wait that out. EXT, I really like his lurk, but I would question whether he actually knows a piece of execute utility from long. It might leave bank unsmoked. Uh, now as the smoke's evaporating, here comes a utility from Sherlock. Dice Molly flying in. Flashes to follow. Yep, full blind tactile. c Mac running in, trades that, but the bank player, who was not smoked, finds one. It's Korn. Two versus two, developing dangerous walk, rotating. So this is going to be a slow burn retake for Davenport. They want to keep IEPY guessing as to whether there will be a flank. And right now it's working. EXT going to push into bank to try to avoid getting flanked. Straylock, I think, is going to... Yep, he, he's scared of that flank as well. That will never arrive. Both players jump up. Straylock, oh, he's so afraid of the flank. He's playing a very unoptimal dice angle, and he gets punished. Now EXT, he didn't expect that swing to be so fast. IEPY lose the post plant. And it's really, I think... Largely in part because Dangerous walked flanked that uh, walk rotated rather than running and they just, you know, weren't ready for two people to be that fast. Yeah. Um, EXC, uh had a good look. He had a good lurk play and honestly that, that kill truck could have been much cleaner than it was. In, um, but he, he went too early on the flash. I don't know if it was coordinated well enough, but yeah, right, right. if he swung with the flash, like at the right timing, he would have got that kill, it would have been clean. And then that maybe allows him to go back long or stay right, long. And CMX doesn't have to die bank because he doesn't no, have to kill it, the guy truck. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't have to swing. Yeah. So one thing to pay attention to as this half develops, I don't think we saw a whole lot of this from IPI, but Davenport, they're CT defaulting. They're breaking open this door, which creates not only a jump spot into the connector that the CTs can see all the way to about here, but also makes this angle very dangerous for the connector lurk players to come around the staircase because their back is exposed to short. It just creates T-side connector defaulting way more difficult than it is without that door being broken. And Davenport, I think, is, is fully in position to um, exploit that. But this round, all, all players towards towards A. Strelok's just running through the front bathroom slope and cannot find Pug in time. A lot of big pressure being put on EXT running in front of Strelok, trying to find the kill. Strelok desperately trying to trade with the Glock, he will find it. But not, the, not without the cost of... Dude, these guys are so fucking stupid. <laughs> Pug expressing his hatred towards that Glock swing in uh, team chat for the world to hear. <laughs> the veteran with choice words for the team. And these guys love the veteran, unlucky. Oh, well, CMX is playing with the veteran this weekend on LAN. <laughs> Sherlock locked all the way down to 4 HP, Rift. Playing for his life, I mean, this is not a great spot to be in. Korn gonna cut off the connector rotation, CMX getting double swung analysis on him. Sherlock, who will get sprayed down, 14 to 5, IPI onto a save. This is absolute death's door for them. And I think, I think... The tilt buys are coming in. I think they're already ready to go to the new map. This will not be a save. I don't even think it's a tilt buy. I think they're just they're just gonna buy. They just want to get to the vertigo. I think they have given up essentially overpass. Unless they win these rounds here, heart and soul every round, of course. But well, likely to be a B rush here. What will Davenport's protocols be? It looks like they've got standard nade tunnel. Well, it's actually gonna offer a molly. It's gonna be a bit late. Just gonna be able to scale. Dinks up, corn through the barrel, I think. And they are scaling, but the left side smoke next to barrels is just going to create such a hard time clearing these angles. Davenport fully expecting this rush, or fully, I guess, reacting very well to it. So see something go down. You see Davenport smoke off right here, this smoke that's uh, creates basically just this tunnel here for the T's to route through, which is exposed to not only bench, but also ramp off angle and also barrels off angle as they scale up. Makes it very hard to come out of the bomb sites, and uh, Davenport plays that anti rush perfectly. C Max, sold off. What will he do with it? Let's find out. The yeah, he just got tied down a ton from a wall bang. Oh! Feel like just two one digs up onto A, but will get traded. Meanwhile, C Max with the sawed off gets a kill, trades into the AWP. Long range sawed off, finds a kill as well. So 
Pure Chaos benefiting the Jaguars. Dangerous has rotated so quickly to dice, though. I don't think CMX is expected that. Jump will give away his position. Isn't able to find CMX. Tapping away only five bullets left. CMX will go down. And now with the USP, he's looking to clutch this one versus two. EFC not going to let it happen. IEPY, um, I mean, I guess good rounds. Trillock pretty much, I think, just made that happen with his double one digs on yeah, the game site. Yeah, the guy, the guy's fountain. Chris with a nice kill, CMX with a nice kill with the sawed off, able to pick up the op, flick on the guy party. And Chaos favors IPI. 15 to 6. Nine more rounds to force overtime. This is where I would usually say that if Davenport loses this round, they're uh, in the hole economically. But um, <laughs> the mountain is so, so tall that they're going to have to break this economy multiple, multiple times. That smoke will make Pug back out of his playground nade lineup. Uh, instead of opting for Fountain Aid, that misses the mark. Rift, offing in bathrooms, there's no one that's going to be able to trade that. A bit weird routing from EXT gets caught out with a smoke, or at least it's not ready for that. Big Daddy going for a Jiggle Peak gets punished as well. Rift too quick for that. Pug getting a double kill from Long Bath and trying to make it a triple. He will. A sight completely unlock in that final round of Overpass, and we are moving to Vertigo. IAPI's map pick. Oh, insult to injury. Davenport gets all the cases. No gambling for IPY either. No free tough. case. That's tough. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough scene. But now we'll go to Vertigo. Um, big day, only with four kills. He's not going to be telling people to cycle stats this game. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, definitely a tough game for uh, Big Daddy A. Usually... Usually leading the ways in fragging with CMX at his side. And uh, if IEPI is going to win Vertigo, they're going to need a big game for Big Daddy A. But we'll go to IEPI's map pick and we'll see if they can force Anubis. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see Anubis not only because it means IEPI won a map, but also because I just want to see some, some Anubis be played. You're yearning for a crisp. You're yearning for a crisp Anubis VOD. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that just that just looks like a, a team that understands overpass on a deep level from both T and CT. We saw, you know, connected road being broken open as a default. We saw um, very, very, you know, diligent T side defaulting, um, you know, across the board from Davenport that IEPI handled very well, basically on the backs of, I think, multi fragging. Um, from Gumbu, for example, I think Straylock also had a multi frag CT round. CMX had a multi frag CT round. Like, with, without a single player kind of making a difference on the CT side, it started to crumble for IEPY. And those two lost clutches that really should have never gone the way of Davenport both went the way of Davenport. And another, those were another, you know, back to back situations where IEPY, I think, really fumbled the, their, their shot at a close game and also probably fumbled their mentals. So, looking to reset on Vertigo, which they'll start on the T side, which. Going off with the overpass T side may not be the greatest sign ever, but we'll see. Davenport doesn't strike me as a team that's going to give up something like a fast A ramp ever. So, IEPI I think is going to have to win this, <clears throat> you know, in, in, the, in the default, in the reaction to how Davenport structures their early CT rounds. Because Vertigo is a map where if you want to contest ramp in a very aggressive map control style way as a CT team, you have to pull a player away from either middle or B to start. And if you can catch on to that as a T side, you can start to make some, some, um, you know, some default plays of your own towards those areas of the map, find kills. And if you're not taking the space, force the CTs to reset. And then you can hit something like a, once, once the structure is, has been depleted, but that's all to, uh, all to be determined here.
being burned alive in a porta potty, that's not the best way to go. I, I can think of at least one one better way to die than burning alive in a porta potty. Waiting on both teams to ready up. All right. Can you like, how does Pug, like, do you see Pug's crosshair or is it? I should, or do you yeah, know? hold on. How do you play um, on that? I guess I don't. I see some players cross here sometimes. Yeah, like, I see Gumboots, for example, but I don't see Pugs. Ah, It's see, literally... I see it, CMX it is... and Gumboots. Maybe it's because they're friends list? I see Well, no, I can see, I can see Pugs. That's weird. I, I can't see any of the Davenport players, but I see all of the IPI players. So I, I must have, like, a friends list only crosshair option, maybe? I don't know. I've never seen that. Dude, he's got the smallest dot I've ever seen. Like, the smallest red dot I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I, I just don't know well, how you do it. The crosshairs look different on different resolutions. What resolution do you play on? You just play on native. Because if he plays on 4x3 and you're on native, then um, his crosshair is going to look bigger on 9, 4x3. 1920 by 10 Okay, yeah, you're playing on native. He's playing on 4x3, which means the cr if he's playing on 4x3 and he has that crosshair, it's going to look bigger for him. Okay, okay. Shaylock alerting the opponents that he is unsarmed for this pistol round. You do not want to get in the way. I, mm, Corn warning him of something else, I guess. Mm. Interesting choice. So, CMX has... What are the flashes? B-Rush. Anyway, this is going to be B-Rush. Bane Joris gonna spot this out, gets absolutely entry by Big Daddy 8. Here comes the three, three CTs already rotating in. The flashes need to be excellent for IQ, and they are. The smoke's excellent as well. The bomb should go down, and we're gonna insert a four versus five post play. In favor of IQ, they're gonna go through the smoke. Tactile goes down. Big Daddy 8 already on two kills, which is, I think, what he had after like eight rounds last game. So, good start for him. There's gonna be one flank. Strelok gonna spot that out. Getting tagged down quite a bit. Gets headshot. He goes down now. Pressure starts to come onto CT. Big Daddy A trying to get a third on this round. Rift gets gooshed up. He's running away. He will find Big Daddy A on a Jiggle Peak headshot. Meanwhile, the flank going down. CMX going to take that fight. Rift, quick headshot as well onto EXT. But with the bomb so far ticked, that smoke is... I don't... It's just to try to keep the T's on the bomb site that much longer and try to get a kill with a bomb, I guess. That's, that actually did land out, though. Mr. Martin, what are your thoughts on him just wasting $300 and running away? I mean, I think that the smoke was to try to get away with the kit, maybe, and the armor that he has. So he's just trying to save the... He's spending the 300 to try to save the uh, roughly $1,000 he has on his back. I think was the thought process. It's, gonna it's like buying a P250 so that you can protect yourself with the op. All yeah, right. but I think he could, he could have a flashbang right Hug now. Oh, he has a Mag 7. Where will he go? Will it be a mid-play? Probably, oh, no, yep, mid play for him. He's gonna he play closer to the He has back. two suitors. But they are not walking up yet. Ramp players getting a little feisty. Oh, here they come. Oh, he's dinked up Gumboot. If I'm the T side, I'm running away, and indeed they will. Who's gonna be thrown in for mid with the Mag 7? Ramp players. Going the one way to play on top of Crane, and IUPUI gonna probably gonna wait for that to go away before trying to advance up the ramp. They have a minute and 16 seconds after all. This is what a lot of Vertigo boils down to if you don't take ramp early. It is it is waiting for CTs to expend their utility and trying to take the space afterwards. I think Corn is going likely to line up another one way for sandbags here. Or just a bottom yellow is gonna be bottom yellow. Bit of a one way for bottom ramp, I think, as well there. IPY's left smoke gets blocked by Dane Joris. Intelligent play there from him, but here comes the XQ Straylock reloading. He's gonna go down. Side control loss for the IPY side. Gonna scale up onto the bomb side. It's pure chaos through the smoke. Dane Joris trying to get it 
everything he can, but Big Daddy A shuts it all down. Three kills for him. And what was promising for Davenport is, is shut down at the end. Yep. This is a great start for IPY. This is going to force Davenport into a half by here. Yep. And Big Daddy A has already crossed the amount of kills he had last game. He's already yep. beaten that. Good he point. is at five now, um, which is a good sign for IPY if you're trying to pull this upset and force Anubis. Yeah. Getting this T side, continue the roll. Okay. Another ramp heavy default from the IPY side. Pug gonna be aggressive towards B Strelock. He has already Correct dropped. Now. Yeah, mid aggression as well from the CT side. Is this gonna be pure chaos? But Big Daddy, wow, insta HS on the Pug. He's fully aware that that B flank could happen. The rest of the Davenport side, I think, is just gonna hope to collect a weapon or two and save. Following this A execute. Dangerous is consistently blocking that left smoke, so that's something that we're we'll having to pay attention to once the gun rounds actually starts. Big Daddy A scaling up on the buff set, looking for even more kills. He's on two in this round, spraying through, almost finds a third, and meanwhile, the Midler coming in for Gumboot finds one, gets traded, and that might be the save for Korn. If he can make it happen, only three bullets. Big Daddy running, gets headshot, Sherlock trades. And now. Davenport's gonna buy up into it. IEPY gonna look to protect this lead for as long as they can. <laughs> now, the, now the game begins. Now the game begins. First buy round coming in. We'll see what IEPY likes to do. Dangerous dropping the op to Riff. So AWP is in play. We'll see if that goes for a fast a ramp pick potentially. Yeah, looks like Definitely. he's gonna go towards A with it. <clears throat> I, I think generally the meta for the AWP these days is to throw yourself a... Oh, he's actually going to be smoking for his team. So he's going to be a late rotation in to the ramp hold. IEPY going to throw a lurch smoke for side. Not going to use it this round. Korn playing an off angle. Trying to pick out CMX. CMX is bottom though and Korn goes down. Entry for IEPY onto the bomb site. The AWP and Rift is now playing from self dangerous. That's a hard fight to win, but he will win it on Big Daddy A. Regressing to the side. Rift... Trying all he can to try to hold this crane push, making space for Dangerous. He gets into side. Double Molly onto self. Bit of a miscommunication there for IEPY, but Strip doesn't need problems. CMX catches out another pick on the side. He's punishing all of these lurks. Straylock got a plant. Reverse three post plant. Straylock only on two HP. He's boosting. He's trying to boost EXT onto self. It's just not working. These pulse points are not good for IEPY, especially now that Straylock is still stuck, and I think they know he's stuck in DD. They do. CMX has to ace after finding two entries for his team. That flashbang can only do so much to create space for him. CMX might think they're on the bomb, but they're not. And this is almost impossible to win from here. He can only find one. The pulse points for IEPY cost them dearly in that round, and Davenport is onto the board. Yep. IEPY finds the early pick, able to get a ramp, but... A couple of mistakes on routing out Blake, Blake Gumboot deciding not to wait for the right side smoke. Peek a little too early, gets opt after Dangerous finds the pick. I think he was going for the trade, but that's what they wanted. Um, if you waited for the right side smoke, the opera probably doesn't find him there, and he's an extra body. And then being stuck in a bad position, I don't know what, why, if they were playing, I guess they were playing to go for the boost early, and that's why EXT was over by Straylock in that position, but they weren't able to pull it off in that. Yeah, they just, I think they literally just missed the jump, but... Yeah. Side smoke early throw for IPI once again. Korn playing the exact same angle he got entried on last round. This time inching out more towards Henny after the early stages, so not going to die to another lurk this time. Three ramp early for Davenport once again. I think we've seen this pretty much every round thus far. The AWP almost finding a kill. Bottom yellow smoke being thrown. Ramp fights being had. Boost for EXT. He will find Rift. Great headshot from EXT. Finds one for his Off meta boost at B. Yeah, tactile. Might find. Oh, Gumboot with a tech. Tactile never knew that that was happening, but he lives. Gumboot couldn't hit a single shot. And the ramp players get chewed up in the meantime. XT trying to pick up the pieces. Dane George finds the off kill. What started so promising for IEPL is starting to fall apart. Dane George, he just goes through ramp and tries to fight with the AWP. Gets punished for it. And now IEPY, they, they have some breath now in this round. They do have one smoke on Big Daddy A that can be used to smoke right. But will they just try to take fights instead? They will. The double layered angle is too much for Big Daddy A. And now three players trying to fight Gumboot all at once. 
and he can't find a shot. There's zero bullets in his AWP. He just whips out the Tech-9. He is still trying to fight. He finds one. I've seen him do crazy things with the Tech-9 before, but he only has 20 seconds to do it. Both players are quite low, but I don't think he realizes that advantage. 13 seconds left. Scaling onto the bomb side. Both Davenport players willing to wait. Gumboot going for the plant and goes down. Man, if Gumboot was on a rifle on that B bomb, so you have to imagine Takaya goes down for free, but the Tech-9 just isn't good enough. Yeah, I don't know if he he just got a little scared by seeing him. Maybe thought he got spotted. Or I mean, it's hard to say, but he takes his time there. He might be able to get that kill on the round. Maybe goes a little bit differently. As Once again, IPI is finding these opening kills, but Davenport are doing a good job of re-aggressing and finding those kills uh, to even out and not letting them take that space for free once they gain it. Like B-Rush here. B -rush here. Tactile on a pretty good place to stop it if he's not flashed off. That Molotov is just fundamentally late, and he is full blind. This should be an issue for the guy who can wires. Rotates are very quick, though, for the CTs. Hug with the A1S spraying down multiple players. Two versus four for the Jaguars, and it is quickly cleaned up by the MP9 of Danger Wars, farming money for his side. And I said immediately after the round three victory for IEPY that they would try to protect the lead as long as possible, and it has evaporated immediately. 3-3 three, three game now. I mean, fundamentally, Vertigo, traditionally, T side, uh, CT side of map. So if you can even, you know, get to the halftime at seven rounds for a T side, it's it, it, it's it's a one half. But at the same time, going from 3-0 to 3-3 as quick as it did, and I don't want to say dominant, but it never really looked like it was in question for Davenport, especially in the late rounds. It can be quite discouraging if you can't shake it off. Once again, three ran for Davenport. Haven't switched up this default yet and really haven't had to. We really haven't seen mid-defaulting at all from IEPY yet. And any attempt at a B play has either been one boost or just a rush. So here comes ramp regression. One-way smoke for top crane. And it looks like IEPY is going to try to establish some kind of B control here. Gumboot gets punished just for being on the stairs. That's a great nade thrown by Tactile with B anchor. Once again, IEPI going to go for the boost up. Big Daddy actually jumps up. He's taking some space out. Rift. He's on the AWP. Big Daddy A. Lucky to be alive, but he scales out. Double box, and he will find the kill. Dactile trades from elbow. And here comes the rest of the IEPI players. They are significantly behind Big Daddy A. Trying to pick up the pieces. Here come the smokes. And here come the issues. The flashbang flying in. Will not blind Tactile as the elbow player. He is still alive. The smoke smoke being thrown. So much chaos. Gumboot able to find him through the smoke. But not able to find the default player in Pug, and Pug, using that one-way smoke on the default box, will find two corn trays, the last. Davenport, able to rotate in, and I've got to say, the, the the time from Big Daddy A's entry to execute was, I think, a big issue there for Jaguars. Yeah, he was he was way up, and basically on an island there, and IPY wasn't able to get the execute off in time, and Davenport, quick on the rotations, throwing the lurk smokes. You see a lot of defensive smokes by Davenport. Uh, I've noticed this series. They have a lot of just using those smokes for cover, playing their lives. Knife you wide. After a 3 0 start, down. Oh, this nade is about to chunk. Oh my god. <laughs> right on their faces. Completely destroys this midler play. Pug playing an off angle here. Very hard to clear. We'll find the first. Doubles up. Cannot triple up. Op. From Rift, gonna take on Big Day on the B stairs lurk, and now it's can can you somehow find kills that you do not deserve from the IPY side? A two versus three. I, I've seen worse situations, especially seeing as CMX does have body armor. Looks like Davenport doesn't really want to let IPY have this space, lurking up towards sandbags. Danger is gonna walk up into CMX's view. Not an easy shot for CMX though. And Rift, I think he's gonna punish any swing. Indeed, the AWP takes CMX down. Moving the A1S into ungatherable territory and putting this round into, I think, almost unwinnable territory for Straylock. Indeed. 5 3 Davenport leads. Five rounds straight after losing the pistol in the ensuing force by and eco. What can I show us? Well, they're going to shell the T side up, bring it out on the gumboot. Gumboot has the B peak spawn, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him take advantage of that. He is, he's definitely looking that way. I think now, see it. that being said, we I don't think we've seen any B ramp aggression ever from Davenport. Tactile was very content to play back double box. 
He does Usually. the way he throws his nade. You can you can you have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Decent damage. Big idea, get a molly out. Danger. This is a pretty quick beat default for IEPY. They still have lurk players on the other parts of the map, but as far as offense goes, most of it is towards B right now. Go Gumbu got tagged down quite a bit from utility. Down to just 23 HP. The early mid play out of Rift's AWP has left IEPI a bit scared towards that position. Straylock watching ladder and CMX now just lurking into Horseshoe. Tactile just got flashed into B stairs and he's found one. He knows there's a second and he spotted the bomb. A lot of information gained. Straylock meanwhile gets entried by an A ramp push. Korn sacrificing 81 health to find that kill. IEPI once again finds himself at a T-side disadvantage. Davenport relentlessly trying to retake space mid as well. So little options for IEPI at this stage of the round. With two players stacked on the B-bomb site currently, you've got to imagine that this is going to be unequivocally a Davenport round win. CMX can go with two flashes for his entry players. Tactile going to be blinded by the second, but the timing just isn't good enough. The flash has long, long since evaporated in their eyes. And Gumbu going to get tagged out by Pug. Tactile going to find one for himself, Rift, as well. Davenport up 6-3, to three, and it has looked incredibly comfortable, especially in these last few rounds. Yeah, incredibly comfortable, incredibly systematic. Davenport just making all the right mid-round plays, as IPY wasn't even remotely expecting a flash repeat onto uh, B as they were trying to boost. They thought they could just do it haphazardly and Davenport made them pay for it. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, what was what was weird to me there is the flashbang comes in and it really didn't even seem like the IU play, IU play, IUPY players were blind. It was more so that they just like heard the flash and didn't really react to the possibility of them getting pushed. Yeah. A lot of early ramp detail from IUPY. They're going to try to scale up quickly. At least Big Daddy is. He's upside. His team following behind him ramp. Davenport, this is typically where you've seen them throw top sandbag smokes, play some retake, but now knowing that IUPY has that map control, it'll be interesting to see how they react. Dangerous walking up. We've seen him win the sandbags fight before. I think Strelak might have just spotted that out. Two players holding this angle. Oh, Strelak is set taking off. Meanwhile, Big Daddy goes down. Rift playing an offshot as well. Gumbu sprayed down. Now it's just on the CMX, who was just lurking. Sees all four of his teammates go down. And at this point, what are you meant to do? Or cleaning it up. 7 to 3 Davenport. It is. It has looked dominant. Seven rounds. Yeah, ever since the pistol and the two ecos, this has been all Davenport. As they just no util, just like essentially just ego, just walking, swinging in the ramp, essentially like just retaking it with no utility, just saying my aim is better than yours, and that's that's how they did it. Um, yeah, IP9 needs to come up with something here. Are we going to see a repeat of Overpass? It looks like we're going to see a fast ramp take. I think this is... Oh, it's a good call here. There's only two starting A. This, I think, is, is in reaction to the fact that there was really no Molotov thrown for ramp itself last time. The Lord Smoke gave them so much space. Now, the scaling needs to be fantastic. Corn doubling up from side, tripling up on the AK-47 spray on the side push. And now, just CMX and Gumboot left to pick up what is left of this round. Dangerous. Not going to have any difficulty. I say that, it was a bit belabored, but he does find CMX and Gumboot in the end. A players, despite the fact that only two were there, completely shut down that IPI push. Eight CT rounds. Davenport has officially won the half following 11 rounds played. IEPY, I think at the very least, is going to want to get themselves to five. Um, for a semblance of respectability. Quick ramp again for many of the IEP players. Big Daddy A, I think, has realized how much space he's been giving he's been given side these last few rounds. Without a side smoke this round, Korn. I think thought about aggression. Currently going to spend the utility to do so. There is two players lurking upside. Big Daddy A, I don't think he's been spotted just yet. Korn looks over him, but the trade is good for Dane Joris. He's gonna back up with that collected. Meanwhile, ramp default for the T-side starting. That sandbags molly was actually just missed. There's no one there, but the T-side going to realize that they've missed that molly. They're going to be paranoid to the point of likely using a second. 
Dangerous. Here's his teammate middle. Kill Straylock. Now three versus four. The IEPY side only has one smoke that's on CMX. Gonna deploy it right side. That nade does significant damage to both T side ramp players. This is not gonna be an easy round, especially considering Dangerous is playing side. Working through this smoke, he finds EXT and Gumboot who's just not looking. That second headshot was crisp. CMX in a 1 versus 4. He finds the trade, but the flank so fast he actually turns around and almost finds Pug, but Rift has his man's back, and Davenport still yet to bleed following the first three. Did they did they clear side? I, I didn't like did they never like because Gumboot just ran out bomb out no, to just plant. I, I think he just saw EXT running up and clearing it and knew that the time on the bomb plant was 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 going to be an issue because there was only a right side smoke. Um, it might also just have been, you know, a comms issue or a tilt yeah. issue. Could be several things. IPY opting into what looks like a fast B play and the smoke. Oh no, the windows weren't even broken correctly. The smoke is going to be late. Big Daddy A. Very quick entry on tactile though. Defensive smoke thrown from Pug. Gonna work through it and try to find players on an off angle lurking through default. I love this way. Big Daddy A runs into him, gets sprayed. Now EXT on top. Double. Dead to a Molotov. Pug relentlessly aggressing. He sprays Gumbo through the smoke. Flick. Headshot. Now CMX 1 versus 4 yet again. Gets killed from the flank. Oh, that looked promising for just a second. But Pug and I think it was Dane Joris also teamed up to stop any aggression from the IEPY side following the bomb plant. And it was good enough to win the round. Yeah. And if you look over the CT economy, 16k, 13k, 15k. Uh, Terra's fucking a nightmare yeah. as Big Daddy A finds the opening, runs up, has a great idea, but just starts making out with Pug in the smoke, and Pug decides that was enough of that and shoots him in the face. Yeah. What was kind of um, interesting about that to me was Big Daddy A ran into Pug in the smoke, but it didn't last long enough that he really felt like he was running into someone, right? It's like, it was within that questionable, like, I'm still in the smoke reasonably range to where, anyway, they're be rushing I, again. I also think they were, they were, they were flash. There's a, a better defensive smoke out of downpour this time, the faster reaction, now tactile. Oh, he's getting jumped over. What is going on? IEQI finds that entry and finds another one. What in the world? This is the round they get the bomb site. Dangerous, he is not happy about that. Running through a Molotov. Gonna just run through a smoke. He finds Big Daddy A and sprays out EXT. What is going on? Sherlock trades, but it's now a two versus two. CMX finds one, but Sherlock burns. And now CMX finds himself in yet another clutch. That flashbang. It's not going to be good enough to take a swing, but C-Max, he's made his own little one-way smoke, it seems. Oh, Rift is anticipating, and he, he hits him. Taps the bomb. Now C-Max dropping, makes a sound. Rift is likely to see him, but the timing is crazy. C-Max spraying the smoke. No one there. Rift wrapping around. C-Max hears it, goes down, and Rift has the time. Chaotic, but yet again, a Davenport win. Chaos. IPYs has decided to just throw full chaos at Davenport to try to steal a round away and it almost works out as we watch a ballerina act between cmx and riff dancing through smokes together and in the end davenport wins another chaotic round we'll see if one more b rush is in the cards yeah well i mean if you're iepy you're, you know you 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 somehow are finding entries every time on the b bomb site you're almost always getting a bomb plant you just can't win the post plant so like yeah as, as an IGO, you're like well, you know why not go be oh my god davenport is stacking 3b Rift hits the first shot, and the entry has been found, but the utility is just is just there in droves, as well as the players. Davenport has this fully red, and I mean the county utility is just insane. The rotations now are starting for IEPY, but because Vertigo is such a small map, the CDs are just going to be on the A site before they can get there. Thankfully for the IEPY site, they do have wall smokes. Oh, Dangerous is not ready for that side. It's going to be that quick. Straylock shoots him right in the ear. Big Daddy A, oh, it's a little bit weird to me. That here, okay, here finally comes the right side smoke from CMX. Gonna take the bomb site with the it's bomb. It's deep. It's deep right oh, the side The flash smoke. is so good. Sherlock coming through, but he looks towards elevator instead of the right. He loses the 50-50. Big Daddy A from Ram finds a kill. CMX and Big Daddy A, these are the exact players you want in this situation. CMX is not going to anticipate this elevator guy. Pug finds a free one. And now Big Daddy A, he's on two kills. He's leading his team. Can he make it happen? IEPY desperately need this fourth round. That tap is going to put so much pressure. He's not buying it, though. Korn swinging with Pug, and Korn going to hit the headshot. Only three T-side rounds for the IEPY Jaguars in the first half. 
It was 12-3 last time, right? I think so. Yeah. So, IPY had a 3 nothing lead at one point. 12 straight rounds in yeah, Davenport. That is, wow. Domination. Complete domination. All right. Now, IPY has to pull up domination on... Good half. No. On their side. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Good half. No. All right. Well... If you're gonna win, you gotta win pistol. CMX has requested a 5 7 from his teammates. Sherlock has obliged. Davenport will be going A with all five members. Four CTs here for the IEPY side. This is going to be the round. They turned for the decoy. Wow. Decoy strat. Decoy. Oh my god. EXT and CMX so quick on those three kills. That's a great round for EXT to have. He was on two kills to end the first half, and he's already on to five. That was a great, great, great play design. As Straylock throws a decoy, shout out Tristan, <laughs> and uh, three people from Davenport turn their heads. Uh, that's and innovation CMX, right there. Cmx to DXC Mog. Okay, I mean that's what you needed. Davenport once again opting for a force buy after losing the pistol. IEPI going to throw, I think, a standard kind of anti-ramp fast play, and I think Davenport's going to run just that, a fast ramp play. A little bit late on the timing against Big Daddy A, but the flash is fantastic. Big Daddy A gets the first kill. Three players closer up to Molly. Late is actually so good for IEPI. EXT doubles up, almost triples up through the smoke. Sherlock, he's getting thirsty for some kills as well. EXT through the smoke finds himself a 30s. 3k these first two rounds. Sherlock, he is just running it down. IEPY, they have, I have yet to lose a player on the CT side, I think. No, they did lose one on pistol. They lost one on pistol. Either way, dominant. Very. It's what you need. I think right now, if, if you're Davenport, um, if you're Koi as the coach, or if you're the IGL, you're immediately noticing that level of um, you know, diligence towards the A ramp um, defense, and you, you remember that for when your gun rounds start. Looks like we're going to see a B contact dependent on likely Pugs flashbangs. Um, you can do several things here without utility. You can boost up, but it doesn't look like Davenport's interested in that. They are interested in fast scaling. Gumbo can opt to a nade instead of just holding the angle with the M4. And that's going to allow them to scale. Only able to get one. CMX coming in, finding one as well, but he gets traded. And now Davenport has a shot in this round. Bomb plant coming in. Pugs going close to generate. That nade only does a little bit of damage. Nade George from the M4A1S. 1 versus 3. 19 HP. What can he do? Can he find 3? No. Gonna go down. IEPY, that was not as clean as they would hope. I guarantee you that. That's going to hurt the economy moving forward. Especially if Gumboot opts into an AWP. Um, but a round win is a round win. And they only had 3 of those before the sap started. 12-6 now. Gumboot electing to go with the M4. Rift does pick up the op on the T side. Mm -hmm. And once again, IPY start off the round 3-0. Can they get this mystical fourth round? Tactile's feeling the laptop gaming. He... It doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. Davenport, very slow default waiting to see what IEPY gives them smart from EXT here to not play this ramp balcony this ramp that that, that bottom ramp looks not going to protect him from any AVPs on that ramp balcony so quality start here for both sides re smoke comes in for IEPY both sides pretty much just I think waiting for the opponents to to do something really um, particularly on the T side you are just waiting out this ramp smoke any re-smoke that follows. EXT has one smoke left, and he will use it right now. I think Rift might have actually caught a glimpse of EXT's head there. With a minute left in the round, the smoke will likely evaporate on 50 seconds, and that's when Davenport will start their ramp crawl, and where Big Daddy A and EXT will be tested. I think Big Daddy A needs to be really careful about Rift's peaking Henny right now with an AWP, and yeah, Big Daddy A, you're just exposed. That's a really bad angle to be. EXT stuck Sandbox. He has no smoke. There's the Molly. Yeah, just gonna go down. This is just, you know, very fundamental from Davenport. If the CTs are giving you that kind of setup, you you are always taking it and you are always winning. Corn gets taken down on his lurk, but IEPY gonna be forced to save. Wow. 
I mean, that that is exactly how Davenport probably discussed it in server time, you know. Wait out the smokes, use the op, clear Henny. If there's one Henny, you get him for free every time. You, you are never winning that fight, especially if you're playing the angle like how Andy was, how Big Daddy was there. And then EXT, if you choose to play sandbags in that situation, you have no support. One Molotov instantly loses the round for you. And Davenport had both of those things lined up, so... Definitely, um, the Jaguars are going to have to look to change up their setup moving yeah. forward. And, and that's, I think, generally why you see a lot of CT teams opting for more cute stuff, like either sandbags uh, one ways or um, like bottom yellow smokes, because those are both smoke sets that kind of dare the T size to do stuff while also protecting ramp. And you can find kills um, in your CT setup rather than just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then you just have to give ramp and then hope that you can win the post plant. Um, whereas like bottom yellow smokes allow you to get up into lurk spots, maybe find one-way kills. Uh, I know in particular that Korn's version of that smoke that he was throwing was definitely a one-way for ramp and he was able to walk down. I don't think we ever saw him use it though. Um, regardless, uh, Davenport going to, I think, establish yeah, a very similar default that we saw last round. Korn, this Molotov will molly the stairs. If it's a good molly, it should spread to Gumboot's location, but it doesn't look like it has. So this could be a false sign for Davenport, but it looks like Corns is going to go A. So what it has done, though, is made C CMX rotate away from a fast A rotation and head instead head towards Which B. Is Tristan is mid, and here comes the fight ramp. EXT goes down for free. Big Daddy A, he is stuck behind yellow. The T side, Rift is still holding yellow. This is great discipline from them, but he just now gets off it, and now Corn goes down. Big Daddy A, quick blanking. Rift goes down as well. Bomb down. Big Daddy A, a great play to keep his team in this round. Now, what can Come be on the flank. problematic is Tactile is lurking through mid-CMX, is playing an angle that uh, he won't see it, especially if he gets timing, but he will have the correct timing. CMX finds that kill. So, IEPY, they're, they're looking good in this round. Gumboot, I think, very intelligently is backing up to the B-bomb side. He, I'm a little bit surprised he backed up as far as he did, but he's not willing to give his life away. And that Davenport has to prove that they can crawl this back in their favor there's a molotov on the ground for them but no smokes which means this is likely going to have to just be one fights for the downport side they're gonna swing together with a high and low swing most likely here yep both clearing elevator simultaneously there is one player on a and that is straylock he is hiding and waiting for sound cues effectively with 21 seconds left any sound cue is going to be enough for a full rotation and the bomb plane is likely to come following this molotov side Pug protecting his teammates, but he's not holding self-boost. And Strelok has a nice headshot on the Danger Horse, not even looking in his direction. Pug, though, not going to let that go untraded. Finds the first, gets himself into a very winnable one versus two with CMX and Gumboot, his opponents. He's going to back away side. No utility. With CMX on a smoke, you're likely to see him want to deploy it. Pug has gotten valuable information that no one is sticking the bomb. Now CMX tapping, going to hop up on top default. And Pug wins that fight. Vital fight to win only 3 HP, and now he's spraying with a Glock and shoots Gumbo right in the foot and wins the 1 versus 3. He's 24 and 9 for his squad, and that is back breaking for IEPY. IEPY playing that round really well for the part. Big Daddy A finding 2 ramp after EXC goes down on a nice side push. Gumbo flanking to find 1, CMX finding the timing, but the veteran, Pug, 1v3 clutch for Davenport. Backbreaking for IEPY mentally and as CMX has bought an XM, he is yeah, that, checked that, out that of the is, game. That is a white flag buy right there. And he has just naded his teammate Gumboot. He got an assist for it as well. Start playing taps for the IEPY guy wires. This is looking cooked. The veteran has been shot down by his teammate. Maybe a bit Tact jealous after that clutch. Tactile though, not wanting to let IEPY even get one kill. <laughs> Turncoats. As Stray like mentally, mentally, he realizes what Tactile was doing. Yeah, well, an absolute <laughs> mountain to climb here. I think all signs port, point towards a Davenport 2 0. What, what was the score of the first game? Was it like 16, 16 5, 16 6? I think it was close to this. Anyway. IEPY looking to make it 50 to 15. Will they succeed? My gamble is no. But if they do, it'll be legendary. That is a mid connector Molotov for Tactile. He's not going to find anyone with that, but he will find CMX with his AK 47. Meanwhile, the B scale is on. They have the bombsite. They know it's clear, and the bomb will shortly follow, most likely. 
rotation now coming in from the IUPUI CTs onto middle and then eventually onto B. Straylock, the only player with a piece of utility. Pug is on a devious lurk play. I love this spot and he's likely going to catch out Big Daddy A. Oh wait, Big Daddy A. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a gunfight like that in all of my time watching Vertigo. I think I've never seen someone jump up on a rail and get killed by that guy on that off angle. That was a terrific flash, but EXT still gets the kill. But can he find three more to save his team? He will not. It's Crouch Peak sprayed, pre-fired, and that's going to be it. Davenport wins the series 2-0, moves IEPY down into the 3-1 Swiss bracket, and moves themselves into the 4-0 Swiss bracket and face it collegiate 2023 spring edition. I will 16. say a lot of these games, their closeness at least came down to a lot of, I think, IEPY throws and clutch situations where Davenport just does not lose those rounds. Um, definitely showing, I think, gap in both practice and in just composure in high-pressure situations. I mean, Davenport is, you know, they're an ECL roster. They're, they're in these situations a lot, IEPY. Um, they're just, they just don't have that kind of um, experience, save maybe, you know, CMX and, and, and to a certain extent, uh, Big Daddy A. Um, so I would assume that IEPY's next game, as usual, will likely take place either on a Friday, so next Friday, or uh, two Mondays from now. Um, they will be in the 3 and one bracket, and I can just take a quick look to see. There won't be a whole lot of teams there because it's such an early time to play this game, um, but we can look at possible uh, winners in the standings. So as it stands, we have... Anyone in three one? So Ashland is sitting in the three and one bracket. So that could be a possible opponent for IEPUI. Um, I would assume. I wouldn't be surprised to see like Texas A and M, NEU, both are, are good rosters. Um, I think uh, Purdue's team is is generally a pretty good roster. Wisconsin and NC State, as well as RIT White, have all been pretty solid over the years. Um, uh, UCF is a. Wow, UCF is one and two. They must have had a lot of good players graduate. They lost uh, they Sorry lose and Terry. What? Did they lose Penny? Yes. I, I oh, know no, they lost. Penny, Penny is still playing. No, they lost. They lost. Uh, S Sorry, S R Y. Right. And Tarek. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, PO. Wisconsin has never been a bad roster for. Um, yeah, I, I recognize um, Eddie. I think uh, I've casted a game of his, and maybe even. I don't think I ever played against Wisconsin. I was playing. I think I played against like Minnesota and like Purdue. You played against Minnesota, yeah, for sure. Um, but wow, U UCF is usually was like in previous seasons uh, always a contender for top four. Um, so I'm a bit surprised to see them one and two. Um, and obviously, uh, wait, was it Northeastern? Uh, is that a Mich is that the Michigan College or North Northwood? Northwood is going. Yeah, Northwood. North Northwood's already in the three and one bracket as well, uh, as well as Clemson. So a lot of different teams I IEPY can play. A lot of good teams that I IEPY can be played up, can be put up against. So should be a good match um, next week. Uh, I'm sure if I have the time, I'll be streaming it. Uh, any any final comments, Jack X D D D? We'll get them next time. <laughs> we'll get them in playoffs. <laughs> we'll win in playoffs. Well, that would that would mean a lot, but I uh, <laughs> I would express my doubts towards it. But uh, either way, thanks for watching and. Uh, 